Hi there. Uh, in this video, we're going to learn about the axioms of the real number system. Um, this is also known as the properties of the real number system. Okay, so that's it. Axioms, um, don't forget, or, or it can be the properties. I think in some books it is written as the properties of the real number system. So in mathematics, um, the word axiom means statements that are you know, simply obvious. Okay, they are, they are the ones which are established, they are accepted, and, and they are um, usually self-evident statements. So these statements are statements which are obvious in short. We just need to explain it here so that we will have um, a universality or a single mind with it when it comes to these properties. So we're going to start with the closure laws. Okay, so what we have here is if A and B, closure law says, states that if A and B are real numbers, so imagine this A um, as a real number, okay, we have learned that in the last video, B can also be a real number, then A plus B and A times B are unique real numbers. So this is the, we call this as the race dot. We, we started using the race dot when we started in algebra since the multiplication sign can be confused with the variable x, which is usually used. So a plus b and a times b. So the closure law states that, states that rather, that if we will add two real numbers, and if we're going to multiply two real numbers, um, the, the outcome is something which is unique. So it's different from this two. Okay, so for example, if we're going to have a as two and b as three, so we can see that this will happen. So a plus b, since a is 2 and b is 3, so if we're going to add, 2 plus 3 is clearly 5, and 5 is unique from a and b. So we can see that 5 is different from a, which is 2, and b, which is 3. So this is um, one example of closure laws. Also, if we're going to multiply a times b, so a is 2 times b, which is 3, the answer is 6, and we can see that 6 is a unique real number, which is different from 2 and 3. Okay, so that is what the closure law states. Second is, we have the commutative laws. This simply states that rearranging the addends or the factors will not change the sum of the products. Okay. Um, anyways, before I forget, in the closure laws, that's why it's laws with the S, because we have the closure law of addition stated here, and the closure law of multiplication stated here. Likewise, in the commutative laws, we have commutative law of addition, commutative law of multiplication, but we don't really subdivide it already since they have the same concept. Okay, so what we have here is that if A and B are real numbers, again, imagine them, imagine them as real numbers, then we can say that A plus B is simply equal to B plus A. And A times B is equal to b times a. So as you can see, we rearranged the um, placements of the addends and the factors, but it will be of the same sum or the same product because it's an equal sign. So let's have an, an example here. Again, we're going to use the same values for a is two and b is three. Okay, so just bear with me with the writings here. Um, so we, we will read this first from left to right going to the bolded integer here, then from right to left until the bolded, bolded integer. So this is to, is to indeed establish that they are the same. So we will be doing this way of reading until the very end of the lecture, so please bear with me. Um, we have, for example, a plus b is equal to, substitute, um, a is 2, b is 3, so we have 2 plus 3 is indeed equal to 5. And if we're going to look at in this way, b plus a, we know that b is 3, a is 2, so 3 plus 2 is also equal to 5. So this establishes that indeed a plus b equals b plus a, So which establishes that it is true for addition. How about um, multiplication? So we can say a times b is, we can write this as 2 times 3, and we know that as 6. Let's start it from the very end, b times a, um, b is 3. A is 2, so 3 times 2 is also equal to 6. So we can say that 2 times 3 is equal to 3 times 2 because they're both 6. And we can also say this for all, that A times B is equal to B times A. That finishes our commutative laws. 
Okay, I hope that's clear. Um, you can, of course, you can rewatch this replay and um, try to um, get the grasp, or rather grasp the, the concept before moving on. Okay, so third in our laws is what we call the associative laws. So this is, to simply put, um, grouping the addends or the factors differently does not affect the sum of the product, rather the sum or the product. Okay, so for example, if we have three real numbers here, A, B, and C, they're all real numbers, they're different real numbers, then we can see that A plus the quantity of B plus C, that is, we're going to add B plus C first and then add it to A, is just equal by of doing, equal of doing, we're going to add A and B first and then add it to C. Okay, I hope that is clear. Again, in this side, we're going to we're going to add a plus uh, rather we're going to add b plus c first and then add it to a. It is stated by associative laws that it is just equal when we add a plus b, the sum of here of this quantity added to c, they're equal. Likewise, in multiplication, a times quantity b times c is just equal of saying a times b, its quantity times c, uh, they're all equal. So to give you a proof of this, so for example, just give one example. So again, we're going to make use of the same values for a, b, and c, let a be 2, b be 3, c be 4. Then, okay, uh, chill, I'm going to explain this one by one. So we're going to start with this part, a plus quantity b plus c. So if we're going to substitute, a is 2 again, b is 3, c is 4. So we have it here. So 2 plus the quantity 3 plus 4. So in this case, we're going to add 3 plus 4 first. If we're going to do that, 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. This 7 added to 2, that's equal to 9. Okay, let's try to check if this side is equal to this side. So we're going to um, go first in the, in the last part of our line. So a plus b plus c, is it equal to 9 also? So let's have it substitute a as 2, b as 3, c as 4. So we have 2 plus 3 plus 4. This time, we're going to add 2 plus 3 first. So 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 plus our c value, which is 4. 5 plus 4 is indeed 9. So therefore, 2 plus 7 is equal to 5 plus 4 because they're both 9. That is, we just established that a plus the quantity b plus c is just equal to the quantity a plus b plus c. Okay, so that's associative loss. In short, the groupings does not affect the, the final output. In this case, in the addition, it's called a sum. How about in the multiplication? So this one is called the product. So we have A times quantity BC must be equal to AB times C. Okay, so what we have here, again, substitute A is 2, B is 3, C is 4. So we have 2 times the quantity 2 times uh, rather, 2 times the quantity, 3 times 4. Um, multiply this first since they're inside the parentheses or parentheses. So we have 3 times 4. We know that as 12. So 2 times 12 is, we know that as 24. Okay, because 12 plus 12 is 24. Okay, let's try to the last part. A times B times C. Let's multiply first the A and B. So substitute 2 times 3 times 4. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 4, so we have a 4 sixes, that's still equal to 24. So indeed, we have established that in multiplication, associativity also holds. Okay, so that's our associative laws. Let's move on to our next law. We call this the distributive law. However, the long name for this distributive law is the, the distributive law of multiplication over addition. So say if we have another three variables, they are all real numbers, then we can say that a times the quantity of b plus c is equal to a times b plus a times c. In short, we, ju we just distributed this a to the b, distribute this a to the c. That's why it's a b plus a c. Okay, so to illustrate this more formally, so we have, for example, let again, we have the same values, a is 2, b is 3, c is 4, then we'll have this. Okay, so we have a times b plus c, we have this substitution part, um, 
3 plus 4 is equal to 7. 7 times 2 is 14. Okay, that's our middle part. From For here, so we have um, AB. This is 2 times 3. That's why it's here. Plus AC, 2 times 4. That's why it's here. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 4 is 8. 6 plus 8 is indeed 14. So thus, we have arrived that the distributive law holds. That indeed, this is true. Okay, so every time you have this kind of, of, of operation, what you need to do is just distribute the outer value to both of the, of the um, terms inside, if you cannot simplify them. Okay, moving on. Our fifth axiom or property of the real numbers is the existence of identity elements. So we are going to have this A. For any real number A, there exists an additive identity. We call this additive, additive identity as our zero, okay, for the addition. And we have our multiplicative identity, and this is denoted as one, okay, as one. So that is, if there is an, if there's identity elements, every time we add a number A to zero, it's going to be equal to that number. If we're going to multiply any number A, by one, it's still going to be equal to that number. Okay, so that's the existence of identity elements. For example, a plus zero is equal to a. Also the same with zero plus a, it's still equal to a. We're adding zeros with it. So we're adding nothing, it's still equal to a. And also, if we're going to multiply anything by one, so it's still equal to that thing, one times anything is still also a. So for example, let a be simply two. So what we have is, um, a plus 0 is equal to 2 plus 0, since we substituted A here as 2. 2 plus 0 is 2. I, um, I don't know how to explain this. This is very obvious already. So we have A equals a plus z 0 plus A is equal to 0 plus 2. That's 2. So therefore, um, adding 0 to any number will still result to that number. And uh, okay, that's it. We pro we've proven that. For multiplication, um, any number multiplied by 1, so in this case, a is 2, 2 times 1 is equal to 2, and 1 times 2 is also equal to 2. Therefore, it holds that for any number multiplied by 1, it's still going to be that exact same number. Okay, so that's our existence of identity elements, the property of identity, or rather identity property of addition, identity property of multiplication for some books. Okay. So we have, we are here now in our sixth axiom or property. We have, or we call this um, first one, existence of inverse elements. We're going to focus first in the additive inverse. So for any real number A, there exists a real number, which we will call the opposite of A. This opposite is also called as the additive inverse of A. This is denoted by negative A or minus A. Okay, that is when we say additive or there's an inverse element, the opposite of A, every time we add that opposite to A, it will result to zero. Okay, again, every time we add that inverse element or that opposite of A to A, the result is always zero. So when we say A minus A, it's gonna be zero, and minus A plus A is gonna be zero. So again, every time we add that, that opposite to A, it's going to become zero, for example, um, let a be equal to 2. So since the opposite of a, the additive inverse, it's denoted by minus a. So we just put a minus sign here and 2. So then the opposite of 2 is minus 2 or negative 2. So yeah, we can see clearly that a minus a, that is 2 minus 2, is equal to 0. Going Starting here from the right, um, minus a plus a, that's minus 2 plus 2, is also equal to 0. And that's that proves the um sorry that proves the existence of inverse elements in our um, addition side okay next is for letter b this is still the existence of inverse elements for multiplication so this is a very common word that we will use for any real number a except zero there exists a real number called reciprocal okay this is the one I, I was talking about this reciprocal is also called as your multiplicative inverse denoted by 1 over a 
Okay, so what does this mean when you when you have this inverse element in multiplication? Every time you multiply this number a by its multiplicative inverse, the result is always one. Again, every time you multiply a to its multiplicative inverse one over a, the result is always one. And the multiplicative inverse is denoted by 1 over a. So that is a times 1 over a is equal to 1. And 1 over a times a is equal to 1. So for example, if a is our is equal to 2, then clearly our reciprocal is 1 over 1 over 2. Okay, 2. The reciprocal of 2 is 1 over 2. So that is, we can see that a times 1 over a, that is 2 times 1 half, um, two one halves. We know that two one halves is one, right? Okay. If you want to have the property of of fractions, two times one is two over two. That's one. But you can just think of it. In, you know how many how many one halves to become one? That's two, right? And then having here from the right test part, so we have one over two times two one half times two. That's gonna be also equal to one. So that that holds. And our, our inverse elements, the existence of inverse elements. So every integer a have its inverse element, and its um, inverse element uh, as in a reciprocal, and inverse element as an opposite, okay, additive and multiplicative inverses. Okay, so that ends our video for today. Um, what have we learned? We have um, uh, explained the closure laws. Both in addition and subtraction, uh, rather sub, uh, addition and multiplication, we have explained the commutative laws, both in addition and uh, multiplication, associative laws for addition and multiplication, distributive laws, okay, for multiplication over addition. We have existence of identity elements, okay. We have the existence of inverse elements, and just to put it in, um, we have also one more um, property. In some books, they 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 put it here in our in our case i think in our course yes we have this zero property of multiplication um this simply states that any number i mean totally any number multiplied by zero is equal to zero okay any real number any a in the reals multiplied by zero is always equal to zero okay so that ends our slide for today our video for today um, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.